Innovation starts somewhere. It's a spark, an idea, a conversation. But it's innovation that really drives economic growth, creates employment and builds wealth. All the things that we talk about on this program. And right now, some of the brightest young minds in the world are working towards a race in the next 15 months that has a history of creating incredible breakthroughs. As car races go, the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge is not the fastest. And, certainly, it's not the loudest. But it does have a history of extraordinary innovation. This event's been running since 1987, and they consider this the most prestigious of all the solar car events around the world. Why? Well, mainly because it's such a great adventure, and it's so difficult. We make no excuse that it's the most difficult, the most expensive, and the most challenging of all the solar challenges. The 3,000 kilometre Outback Challenge sees 40 to 50 international teams race from Darwin to Adelaide, powered only by the energy of the sun. But more than the challenge, the brilliance of the event, backed by the South Australian Government, is that all the teams, all the innovation, comes from students. The great trick of an ambitious project such as this is not just the technology breakthroughs for today. Think about this, a solar electric vehicle that can travel up to 1,200 kilometres at up to 140 kilometres an hour. But also the knowledge being gained from a group of Australia's smart young minds and the breakthroughs they'll achieve in their lifetime. Business Weekend this year has profiled two companies, the electric vehicle charge station manufacturer Tritium and the metal parts 3D manufacturer Spee3D, whose founders each come from the World Solar Challenge. But it's not the only innovation. Chris Selwood says Elon Musk was inspired by the Solar Challenge when he sold out of PayPal and was considering an investment in Tesla, now the world's most valuable car company. And Musk hires straight from these World Solar Challenge teams. SunSwift alumni, I think we've got about 25 working at Tesla and I think we've got 15 working at SpaceX. So this is a great launch pad for them. We put them across the best world-bleeding technology and they're able to take that technology away with them, hit the ground running and strike off those amazing careers. Like SunSwift chief engineer Alex Ayer. Oh, it's probably about 70 to 80 per cent built by us. There's key components that we purchase, um, but most of it, such as the battery, the chassis, wheels, suspension, it's all built by us. And its chief designer, Ben Heiner. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that you can take out of the design. I don't think directly this exact design would necessarily work on a consumer vehicle, but there's a lot of learnings from here, like that specific aerodynamic efficiency focus is something that most vehicles don't have, but it's very necessary, especially for EVs. The World Solar Challenge can change young careers, but older careers as well. Richard Hopkins was once at the elite level of Formula One, a principal of Red Bull Racing. Today, he's the team principal of a student solar car team, the University of New South Wales, Sunswift. I, I think I, I once believed that working in Formula One, I was surrounded by the world's very best, and largely that is true. But let's not underestimate the talent we have here and the talent we have here in Australia. It's incredible. The, the, you give these guys and girls the best opportunity, the best environment, this creative environment, and they will absolutely excel. But apart from the technology, the innovation, there's something else the students are taught that prepares them well for the commercial world. I think probably at the heart of it is competition. And people want to win. And, and, and the, certainly the World Solar Challenge and this project gives you a great platform to be able to produce and validate that technology and all that hard work and effort. Because it is a lot of hard work and effort, not too dissimilar to Formula One. And nobody wins in Formula One and on a Monday morning says, boy, that was easy. It's always hard work. And with this technology and passion for building high-tech electric vehicles, it begs a question as to why Australia hasn't rekindled its car manufacturing industry. But as they say, never say never. I personally don't see... I, I don't understand why not. Um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't do in the future. Uh, and, and maybe there are some plans afoot to do exactly that. I don't see any reason why we can't take what we're doing here and, and scale it and, and build something much bigger. Uh, we've got to remember that the car production today, manufacture, is, is different to how it's ever been. And maybe, just maybe, some of the young minds behind this project will be those leading the charge. So throw your mind forward 20 years. What are you doing in 20 years' time? 
hopefully running a car company. <laughs>